Hi, welcome to wheatgrasskits.com. This is uh, our video on how to grow wheatgrass using our hydroponic wheatgrass growing kit. Uh, and we want you to be able to grow nice, thick, healthy wheatgrass for, uh, for juicing. A lot of folks use it uh, for decorative purposes, real popular in weddings, all kinds of good stuff. But let's talk about our organic wheatgrass kit that is hydroponic. This is the contents of our hydroponic wheatgrass kit. Let's talk about what's in here. Uh, first two things, we've got our book. We wrote this and it is, uh, it is the, uh, the sum knowledge of about 22 years of growing wheatgrass. We've grown thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, trays of wheatgrass. We started out in a greenhouse. Uh, growing wheatgrass commercially in the early 90s, selling wheatgrass to uh, health food stores and local juice bars and that kind of thing. And we've had the opportunity to experiment with every possible technique and every combination of seed and everything else to grow wheatgrass. And our wheatgrass kits are streamlined. Uh, and again, kind of consolidated 22 years of knowledge. But that's our book, comes with the wheatgrass growing kit, and we've got simple step-by-step -step instructions on how to use our uh, wheatgrass growing kit. Now let's talk about what the main contents here of our hydroponic kit are. We've got some uh, seed and it's pre-measured. It's the exact correct amount for, uh, for each tray so you don't have to worry about measuring. We've got uh, 12 ounces of azomite. This is our favorite trace mineral fertilizer. This isn't your standard NPK or anything like that. This is uh, 67 trace elements in a bioavailable form for uh, wheatgrass and if you fertilize your wheatgrass with this stuff you end up with healthier mineral rich uh, wheatgrass juice which is uh, what everybody wants. Now we've got some growing trays and in our growing trays here you'll notice that we have trays with drain holes and without drain holes. Very important because we're going to use kind of a combination approach here because of the hydroponic nature uh, of our growing approach. Then lastly we've got our growing medium. This is a Cocotech hydroponic wheatgrass growing mat and what it's made of it's, is, it's made by uh, with woven um, coconut fiber so it's all natural. Now can it be composted? The answer is yes but that's a long-term compost on that. It's biodegradable but uh, the nature of the coconut fiber takes a long time to compost that but it is compostable. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start out uh, with our first step and that is soaking our seeds. So you're going to take uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a quart of water, maybe not quite that much, and then you're going to take your just regular organic wheatgrass seed and we're just going to soak that guy and we're going to soak that for you know eight to twelve hours and after that soaks we're going to transfer that uh, we're going to transfer that soaked seed into a colander and uh, let it continue to kind of grow in the colander drained and maybe give that guy a rinse every uh, every 12 or 14 hours and let it grow in the colander. We like to uh, place the colander in a refrigerator and let it grow in nice cool conditions. It'll be nice uh, slow growing there and uh, what you're looking for is you're looking for your seed to just start to sprout root tendrils before it's ready to plant. So we're going to give that a good soak. Now let me give you one little tip here. In real humid climes and in warmer temperatures, occasionally you might have, uh, you notice a little bit of mold growing in the base, in the root hairs uh, of your wheatgrass tray. If that becomes a problem, and it, in, in most places and areas it's not an issue, but if you do see that uh, coming up, check out our website, wheatgrasskits.com, for a bottle of mold control. And this is nothing fancy, all it is is uh, grapefruit seed extract suspended in glycerin. And if you soak your seed, if you notice mold, and again, the odds are you won't, but if you do, if you soak your seed in water that has just a dropper full, that's all it takes, is just one dropper full of mold control in there, you're going to find that that 99% uh, of the time will take care of any mold issues. If you need more help and uh, support on that, give us a call uh, or send us an email to support at wheatgrasskits.com and we'd be uh, happy to, to share our strategies with you uh, if you do have a little tougher issue. So you're going to soak that again overnight and then uh, another maybe day or so rinsing in a colander. What you're going to hope for is you're going to hope for, well hope for, I mean it works every time it's tried properly, right, is you're looking for um, wheat that has started to sprout and grow these little uh, root tendrils. Now that's a little bit longer than uh, we'd normally uh, har uh, start planting them, but that's okay. These guys are, are ready to plant and that's about uh, well, you know, one pre-measured bag of soaked seeds, so we're ready to go. 
Now the next step is we need to prepare our tray. Now, you've got a couple of options. Again, because we're talking about a hydroponic growing medium, let me show you what that starts to mean here. Right here is a tray that's about four or five days old and it started to grow in the hydroponic grow mat. And you can see that the root hairs have totally encompassed the growing mat and that's how it works, right? That's the whole point of, of hydroponic. We don't need any actual soil. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take our tray with holes and we're gonna lay it inside of our tray without holes. And that'll help us to not have a problem with uh, drainage or anything else. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our grow mat and we're gonna lay it and kind of center it there inside of our tray of water, or I'm sorry, our, our growing tray. Now the issue is, in order to prepare this growing mat to receive uh, the root tendrils, you gotta soften this guy up a little bit. So what you need to do is you need to take that and prior to, to uh, planting your seed on it, is just to soak this guy for about two hours. Give it about a two hour soak. Uh, so as you're starting to get uh, close to the end of your seed being ready, just go ahead and put a couple of cups of water uh, in this growing tray. So we'll go ahead and do that. So what we've done is we've added uh, just a couple of cups of water to our trays. And remember, we've got our trays nested inside one another here. And we've given our, uh, we've given our mat a good chance uh, to soak and it'll absorb uh, quite a bit of that water and you'll see, you'll be able to feel it softens up quite nicely. And you can see that it's, uh, it's fairly good and wet there. Okay, so with that, uh, with that mat nice and soaked, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply plant and just uh, spread our sprouted wheat seed right on top of that grow mat. Now you can see the mat doesn't fit exactly in, uh, in the tray precisely. So if you slide it over maybe to a corner, um, it'll be a little bit easier to spread your wheat seed without losing any over, uh, or as much at least over the edge. So all you wanna do is just spread that out nice and evenly over the grow mat and then we'll cover it with some paper towels. So just nice and fairly even over there, and we're good to go. Now, what we like to do also is we like to take some of our azomite trace mineral powder, and uh, you can either spread it in a, in a thin layer on the grow mat before you plant the seed. Certainly doesn't hurt to uh, sprinkle it a little bit over the top of the seed either way. And that will just make sure that uh, you've got plenty of trace minerals available to uh, be picked up in the grass as it grows. No problem at all. Okay. Now, we're ready to just cover that with about four layers of paper towels. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the purpose of the paper towels is we want to keep the root hairs nice and damp. If your root hairs start to dry out at all, what's going to happen is you're going to get uh, some of them die off completely. You're going to end up with a pretty thin looking scraggly crop. So as a troubleshooting issue, uh, you want to make sure that we've got this covered with paper towels and then we're going to give this guy a good soak and we're going to make sure the paper towel is nice and damp at all times until this guy has grown up to the right point. Now what's gonna happen, we're gonna, uh, let's go ahead and soak this guy and see what happens. And once it's soaked, you're gonna see that as these uh, wheatgrass tendrils start to grow, it's gonna push this paper towel up. Now, we've got a tray right here. It's about exactly the right place where it's pushed the paper towel up and the paper towel's been removed from it. So normally, you'd have that paper towel just resting right on top of the root hairs. And when it's pushed up just above the uh, edge of the tray, you can go ahead and just pull that guy off and expose it to light. And if this grass looks a little bit yellow, it's because it hasn't had much light exposure yet, right? As compared to this guy, which is nice and dark green, it's had a couple of days of light, right? So once you've got it to this stage, we can go ahead and give this guy a soak uh, probably about every 12 hours or so. And uh, we'll take this over to the sink and uh, go ahead and do that here so you can see what that looks like. We're gonna now give our hydroponically seeded tray of uh, wheatgrass a good soak. You can see we've got our Cocotec grow pad, we've got our uh, sprouted seed under there. We've got a brand new paper towel 
over that. All we got to do is give this guy a good soak. Now remember, uh, with growing hydroponically, we've got both the tray with holes and without holes. We've planted in the tray with drain holes. So once you've got that paper towel over the top of it, let's give that guy a good soak in cold water. And you want to make sure that the, uh, the paper towel is nice and saturated. Get it nice and wet. Give it just a moment to drain off a little bit. You can kind of angle it and uh, kind of help some of the excess water drain out. Then take that tray and nest it inside of the tray with no drain holes. Now the reason that we're doing that is a soil-based approach. The soil, after it finishes dripping, uh, it won't drip anymore. The soil will hold plenty of water. The hydroponic grow pad, not so good at holding the water, and it will continue to drip for uh, quite a long time. So that's why you want to nest it inside of another tray without drain holes. You'll want to re-soak this guy typically twice a day. Once a day might be fine, but you want to monitor very closely and make sure that this paper towel is nice and wet all the time. If your root hairs dry out, you're going to get a less than ideal crop of wheatgrass. Continue watering twice a day, or at least once a day. You can spray mist it uh, in between times if it gets uh, a little bit dry. But um, continue s saturating, soaking this guy, same process, twice a day for several days until the seedlings lift the paper towel about to the top of the tray, and at which point you can remove the paper towel. Now what you're going to do is you're going to end up looking just about exactly like that. That's grown on our hydroponic growing medium right there. And you can see the uh, wheatgrass really starting to take hold there. That's about right when we would take the paper towel off. And from that point, watering it, same kind of basic approach. Make sure that you remove right, the tray with no holes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, give this guy a nice soak in cold water. Make sure it's got plenty of water, all those seeds, all those sprouts are nicely saturated. Then go ahead and let this guy drain. You can see it draining under there. Give it just a couple of minutes to drain. Again, you can angle it to get a little bit of the excess water out. And at some point when it feels like it's mostly drained, we're pretty close there, go ahead and pop that in. Continue to water that at least once a day uh, until you've got a crop that's grown up about six, seven, eight inches high. Uh, at which point you can harvest. Uh, again, you can compost the, uh, the Cocoa Tech growing mat, although it's, uh, it's biodegradable, but it is uh, very slow to compost, so expect to take a long time to compost those growing mats down. Soil, piece of cake, will compost quite quickly. Uh, so that's basically the process, and then we can uh, go ahead and move over to harvesting. Here we've got a tray of grass that's about four days old, and you can see we've exposed it to light, and it doesn't have to be any fancy light. You don't need, uh, you know, you don't need any, any fancy grow lights or anything. Plain old sunlight, ambient room light, uh, I, or ambient room light, I think you'd be surprised would do a fairly good job of it. Although the more light it gets, the greener it's gonna get and the healthier the grass is gonna be. But, uh, you know, window sunlight, uh, you can grow outdoors on a porch. Um, wheatgrass is subject to, um, temperature affecting its growth rate. The colder it is, the slower it grows. The warmer it is, the faster it grows. So keep that in mind. And you can vary grow rates and, and slow things down or speed them up uh, based on controlling the temperature. But long story short, just uh, four days of growth on this guy. You can see it's greened up quite nicely and there's no, you know, no grow light or anything fancy on this. It's just regular ambient room light as, uh, you know, and, and some sunlight through windows and things like that has got this guy to where it's at. So no worries. After about seven, eight, nine days, you end up, and this is a little bit longer, that's a little taller than, uh, than we normally would grow up before we harvest, but that's okay. So that's our final product of uh, wheatgrass grown hydroponically. You can see it's every bit as strong and healthy as wheatgrass that you would grow uh, in soil. So no problems, you got nice, uh, two nice techniques. Which one do we prefer, by the way? Well, we generally prefer wheatgrass in soil right? But uh, hydroponic is uh, kind of fun. There's a little bit less mess. Uh, the soil kit, you know, easy, fast, a little bit messier. So there's a, there's a trade-off there. Uh, one other big issue too is our soil-based kit is quite a bit heavier than the hydroponic kit and that affects uh, shipping costs as well. But our preference, uh, and, and we've sold more of our soil-based kits than anything else, but there's our final product. In another video in this series, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about harvesting and juicing. Uh, not terribly tough at all to do. Uh, but anyway, visit us at uh, www.wheatgrasskits.com to learn more about uh, growing wheatgrass and to get a full line of kits, growing seeds, supplies, juicers, uh, everything you need, certified organic,
Uh, we'd love to have you visit. Thanks.